Hello everyone and welcome to this theory recording on nodes, branches and loops. So what is a node? If we look at the circuit on the right hand side, we can define a node as a junction of connecting wires. So every point on a node is at the same potential, in other words the same voltage. So a node is a point of connection between two or more elements or two or more branches, which we'll define a bit later. So if we look at the circuit, here's a point of connection between two elements. Here's a point of connection between three elements. And here's a point of connection between two elements, whilst we ha also have a point of connection here between three elements. So this would be defined as a node. And in this circuit, we have one, two, three, four nodes. What about a branch? A branch is just another name for any circuit element that is between nodes. All right, so how many branches would we have here? Effectively, it's how many relevant to how many elements we have. We have one, two, three, four, five elements. Therefore, we've got five branches. So if we just quickly note that, we know that the number of branches is equal to 5 and the number of nodes we've counted as equal to 4. What about loops? Right, a loop is a closed path that begins and ends at the same node. Whereas we have another definition which is known as an independent loop which is a loop that contains at least one new element that is not part of any other loop. So let's first look at the loop definition. So we said a loop is any closed path that's important that begins and ends at the same node. So you start at the same point and you end at the same point. So if we look at the first loop that has been identified, Let's, we start at the source, we go around the whole circuit and we come back to the source. So that's our first loop. Our second loop, we start at this resistor, we go around the circuit, back to this resistor, that's our second loop. And our third loop is the outer loop, which is the bigger loop. So we start at the source, we go around the whole circuit and we come back to the source. So in terms of loops, we have three in this particular circuit. But how many independent loops do we have? So we say an independent loop is a loop that contains at least one new element or new branch that is not part of any other loop. So if we look at loop one, loop one has a new uh, source, a resistor and a resistor. So that's new that's new and that's new. So loop one we can see as an independent loop. If we look at loop two, in loop two we have this element which is not new, it's already part of loop one, but that's new and that's new. So loop two can also be considered as an independent loop. Now what about loop three? In loop three we go the outer loop and you'll notice that all of those elements have already been used in either loop 1 or loop 2. So that tells you that that loop 3, which is the outer loop, is not an independent loop. So the number of independent loops, which is denoted by this cursive L, is actually equal to 2. An important equation to take note of that will allow you to determine any of these elements is known as the fundamental theorem of network topology which states that the number of branches is equal to the number of nodes plus the number of independent loops minus one. So in our previous example, we had five branches and four nodes. So we can then say the number of branches was 5, the number of nodes was 4, plus the number of loops minus 1. And if we then calculate this, we've got 
um, 5 minus that is going to give us 1 plus 1 equals the number of independent loops, which tells us the number of independent loops is actually equal to 2, which is what we had determined in the previous slide. So this theorem will allow you at any point in time to be able to determine any of these unknowns given the other ones that you've calculated. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy the course.